Hi, in today's episode, we have Dr. Amita Parsuram. Dr. Amita retired as an associate professor of psychology in December 2020, having taught psychology for 40 years. As a psychologist, most of her work focused on making psychology applicable, which is really the need of the hour, so that it can contribute to enhancing the quality of life for those very people where psychology claims to study. Her endeavor has been focused on conducting training, workshops. She's been a huge resource person in national, international conferences, panel discussions, which Amita will tell us all about. Her two special programs being at the invite of GEG Women's Asia Network Summit, Malaysia and GE Asia Talent Forum, Japan, where delegates from 10 different countries participated in the workshops conducted by Amita. Most of her work revolves around gender, and that's the reason we both bonded and we are going to talk today. Gender-related issues affecting interpersonal relationships, mental health and human belief systems. She follows and practices the cognitive behavioral paradigm of psychology. And... That's not all. Amita's second passion is to write Urdu poetry. Urdu to pyar or ish ki zuban. Her poetry reflects a spread of all the concerns mentioned above, albeit in a different language and style. In 2019, she started speaking on public platforms against what's called khawateen ka mushaira, women's mushaira, in favor of combined mushaira with men and women sharing the same platform on grounds of good poetry only. At present, she's working on a book which compiles the powerful contributions by women poets in the last 150 plus years. Relevant to our present interaction, Amita has submitted her research-based book content on female anger for publication. Welcome, Amita, in today's episode. And we will talk today about female anger. This is the most ostracized part for a woman that she's not supposed to be angry. She's supposed to be all the time gentle, all the time in control. When a woman is angry, she's always treated as somebody who's really lost her mind or she's uh, aggressive. And uh, most women tend to all the time stop their anger and they stop themselves from expressing their anger. So tell me more about it. Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to this very, very, very powerful platform of yours because it has a voice of its own. And I really congratulate you for that. And I'm feeling very happy connecting with you on a theme which is very, very close to my heart. Uh, and in fact, you know, I can share right at the onset that, uh, onset that uh, it started with my own journey, you know, denial that I had to face throughout my life about my quote unquote, being angry about things which were unfair, unjust, etc. So uh, uh, I think, you know, it's very important that we all have kind of the same view about what anger is. I don't know why people make it out to be a bad emotion, a negative emotion, because the first thing I want to say is that any emotion has a inner role to be in our life. And likewise, for anger, anger is speaking to us about something. And we need to hear that. The problem is that that anger men are allowed to speak with, but women are not by the cultural instructions that we get right from the moment a girl is born. So I think uh, when we have to understand anger, my bottom line about it would be it's speaking to us about unfairness, injustices, violations of our rights, etc. And it kind of tells us that, look, you need to wake up. Anger tells us you need to wake up about something that's not right. And I think men and women both have the right to listen to what anger is saying. But having said that, I think you and I know, I don't think for centuries women have been allowed to acknowledge their anger, leave alone express it. So you're right uh, in saying that most of the women, you know, end up becoming scared of even acknowledging their anger. Even looking at it that I'm angry and they kind of try to understand this uh, inside some, somewhere at the subconscious and conscious levels that something is not okay and I'm angry about it. This is a very powerful statement which very few women can speak. I am angry and to say that unapologetically. For instance, even for men, I don't think the society is fair in that sense, though, of course, men have been the privileged among the, uh, among the two sexes, um, they are not supposed to be afraid or fearful. So, uh, you know, this theme, female anger, uh, 
which kind of brought you and me together more uh, mama uh, i think uh, is very very close to my heart and uh, you know in my long journey as a psychologist i must have spoken to hundreds of women hundreds of women uh, sometimes they were my students and i realized through my journey by talking to them when they were in a very safe and a very secure environment that many of these women were compromising with their lives never expressing anger never expressing anger and i was sometimes asking the question to myself are they not angry about what they are sharing with me why am i not feeling anger in their voice i would be angry if that's what i was going through but of course in therapy we don't really tell them this right but that did trigger a very big question in my head like what really is this female anger and you know when i'm looking at anger uh, experienced by women i'm looking at what makes them angry what are the causes what are the do's and don'ts about it? can they can they express it and not have regrets about it many such questions what i can say is i'm really very happy that today we are uh, going to talk about it uh, and your passion for this is something which is so motivating as far as uh, the social status is concerned the cultural instructions are concerned honestly they keep coming to us as subtle messages right from childhood when a small girl is angry about not getting her share of x y z tum itna gussa mat kiya karo tumhe bade ho ke dusre ghar mein jana hai tumhe ghar mein adjust karna hai and these kind of things i think even despite the fact that times have changed today are still happening you know there's a very interesting quote which i like to share with you where uh, one of the psychologists looks he said there is no avenue for a woman's expression of anger that will not be considered irrational by the culture by the society isn't that powerful no matter what we do how well we express that anger uh, no i think we are always irrational but when a man expressing anger i think that's looked at as unfolding of his masculine role he supposed to be angry so i think that's oh, where yeah. i think it starts in popular yeah. culture even today they talk about the angry young man you know where bachchan absolutely personifies being this angry guy who's and i'd written an article actually on this amita sometime back you know because this angry man who's been idolized as the hero and uh, you know the heroine is all the time very comely and very quiet and you know he will be going around bashing people up and you know there is no dialogue that happens between two people when they are not in agreement in and that is something that's been idolized you know and uh, culturally all over i i think women are very ashamed to express anger and like you said that you speak from your personal experience for me my entire writing journey also began from that whole space where you know i was done being a mom and not done being a mom but i had done all the work that was needed you know having been a wife uh, you know and uh, eventually finally i was just left with such a void in my life where i didn't know that if i were to express um, the fact that you know i was relegated to just buying the vegetables outside and there also you are constantly being questioned you know for how uh, what value you add to the entire home and that anger also i was supposed to if i express people said oh she's frustrated and you know when they label you as being frustrated they are obviously again uh, you know stopping your voice they are not allowing you to express something for which you feel short change something for which you feel anger for something for which you feel that you somebody has hurt you you know something that you feel you deserve but that didn't come along the way it should have come and uh, yes so for me anger also like this podcast to me amita i can't begin to tell you how much it is hard felt and i want to thank you for reaching out to me because um, like you know often as creative people we invariably keep questioning our entire worth in this entire journey but I, when i have women like you who reach out to me i you know my resolve for doing this gets stronger and stronger and uh, yes and i need to thank you you know while we are sitting and talking to each other that uh, you probably don't know what kind of a boost you've given to me on days when i feel completely angry for having given up work for having given up so many things in life and you know and being in a situation where you you know because financial independence also is so important for women Absolutely. and yes and um, you know so i mean the topic is like 
is so vast that Abhita, you and me can go on and on. But tell me some of the I anecdotes. I would like to thank you more because honestly, I think I reached out to you because you are there and you're doing something worthwhile. And it's your honesty and your, your, your very forthright approach to bringing things which most of the people otherwise, you know, uh, go hush-hush about. So actually, it was your work which attracted me. And I'm thankful to you for, for having this platform, which speaks for a voice which has been stifled by this, this society forever and ever, not just India. I mean, okay, yeah, yeah, maybe a little work. ahead or a little behind another social group. But the point is, women have never been given the basic right to be just human. Feelings are for every one of us. Absolutely. Why should I be ashamed of being angry? I remember my whole childhood, everyone used to call me, Ye bade usse wali hai, except for my father. It's my father who in my very vulnerable time, and a child doesn't know what she has to do herself. You need to have certain validation. I must say that I'm lucky that I had validation from him. And he, he understood me and explained to me um, that your anger is justified. And then he, of course, his way of bringing me up kind of showed that. And that's what made the way for it. You see, people make them express anger angrily. And that is what they are aiming at. Because when a woman expresses anger angrily, she's giving to them the pleasure, them meaning people in the society who are patriarchal minded. So anger is not bad. I would simply request women who are listening to us today, please accept your anger as something which is speaking to you about the wrongs that have been done with you. Acknowledge what it is about. What has caused this anger? Unless we connect with the reason behind that anger, it can't go any further. But after that, express anger in a way where two things happen simultaneously. When you, that way is remaining grounded, you know, not being in the grip of anger, rather you know exactly how much of anger you need to express in that moment. So I may talk to, for example, if my partner has been rude to me and at that time I can scream and say aggressively, how dare you talk to me? How dare you abuse me? Now that's going to fall flat because it's really not going to be taken. It will lead to escalation. And that's mainly the reason why I say don't do it because you're going to lose the very idea, the thought, the pain that you want to convey to the other. But if I say it with a whole lot of firmness in my voice, I'm not asking for sweet talk, okay? With firmness in your voice that I am not open to this way of talking to me. I am not open to accepting any of these abuses that you give. You see, setting that boundary in a firm voice. So she says women go from anger to tears very often because when they are angry, people are not willing to even acknowledge that there is any rationality in why they are angry. You know, you're talking nonsense as they hear often. You can often. say that again, Amita. Dr. Amita, please repeat that line again. Okay, that, yes. the anger to tears one? Yes, the anger to tears one. That's actually a very powerful and a very a very much present in a very large number of women. They start, oh, suppose yes. something has gone wrong, okay? And she's angry about it, consciously or unconsciously. Now, in the unconscious acceptance of anger, it may come out in a different way. But when it comes out, they are angry. And if it is saying that, look, you have really made me angry, tumne aisa kyun kiya, aisa kyun kiya, there will be arguments from the other side. Mostly, I'm talking about heterosexual relationship here. So the man would say that, you know, tumhe yuhi dikta rehta hai, maine kuch nahi kiya hai. You see, he's speaking loudly and being abusive is granted to a man. So usko kuch usme galat nazar hi nahi aata hai. Okay? So when jab nazar nahi aata hai, then he'll argue to defeat her argument. And if you're a good daughter, then you're a good girl. If you're a good wife, then you're a good woman. You see, there's so much of conditionality that is imprinted on the psyche of most of the women. I'm talking my country right now. That, that they end up feeling very scared of continuing with this anger argument because there is a threat there that this will end. So when they sense those kind of fears because the other party is not acknowledging or validating their anger emotion, even with justification, they end up crying. Now, what is the significance of crying here? Why do they end up crying? From anger to tears is a journey where anger is an emotion they feel. In between, there is rejection of their emotion and any, any, any reasoning behind it. 
and they fear my anger is going to make my partner angry and what if he leaves me what if there are problems in our relationships and then she ends up crying but mai kya karu and the moment she cries out of 10 at least in 8 cases minimum the man softens and he says acha acha chalo theek hai koi baat nahi ab roo mat that i think is criminal because you have encouraged this woman to remain subordinate inferior someone who should not speak about certain things of aaj bol liya hai aage se mat bolna and so with tears the man comes back to her and that reinforces this journey from anger to tears isn't that sad Oh my god I've never even been able to look at this entire journey like the way you did it for me Amita today I mean this is just goes out to all the listeners because I don't think there's a single woman who's not gone through this situation in some relationship or the other you know it can be with a parent it can be with a child it can be with a husband it can be with a boyfriend it can be with a lover it can be with whoever when you're moved from anger to tears and that that level of helplessness that women face at times because you know you're forever told to reject what you feel yeah. because what you feel as a society we are told we are not supposed to feel and uh, it it is such a pity my god i mean amita again i repeat that this podcast to me is such an honor to have you but while we are talking i would really like you to also share with some of Uh, in the our listeners you know because there are so many girls who listen to this podcast world over we'd like you to share some instances you know that you've had in this entire journey of yours as a psychologist you see i'll talk about it as a psychologist from one side and as me amita the woman i have uh, observed other women suffering and i have suffered on account of my i am going to call assertiveness you see the problem with our Our, our society is that a woman who who's connected with her own inner voice is called a bitch they don't have tolerance for women who know exactly what they want to do and if i even as a psychologist when i have expressed myself in some let's say professional meetings or as a professor in our staff councils and i had come out with a very very strong statement after having given many chances i had to become strong i don't start that way okay i realized that a lot of women did not support that point even if it was something which was supposed to be helpful for every one of the staff members but they wanted to keep their right image what if the principal gets very um, uh, offended by what i'm doing and supporting amita had become a thing people had to think about it was almost as if you know when i'm speaking so strongly about x issue then i am making the authority uh, in my college kind of upset and if i support anita so that's where i have realized that a lot of women i feel sad for them they become deaf to their own voices and 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 that i have experienced millions of times as a woman in personal family life uh i said to you that as a child i was called isko bada gussa aata hai isko i have had thousands of messages coming from uh, very often my mother who used to say that uh, uh, tumne adjust karna hai to phir uh, uh, kaise karogi itna gussa aayega to kaise adjust karogi but thankfully as i said my buffer my protective force was my father who used to give that space I have to interrupt here because I have been told this constantly that oh you are arrogant and you have too much of attitude. The minute you know that this is the boundary I want to draw and I don't want you to cross that boundary over, I have been constantly and you know people who know me closely will tell you I can say and vouch for this that I'm a warm human being. I'm a good human being. I you know? I know that in these few <laughs> few talks itself that the problem is people are not willing to have that balanced woman which you are who can experience warmth and who can also experience anger you see the problem is the prototype of who is a good woman that's that's faulty it yes, doesn't allow us to be a complete be. woman yes. that's the problem either you have to be you know very mushy and in tum pe jaan qurban and you know ek wo kya kehte hain ki sacrifice karna sacrifice is very important unless you sacrifice yourself 
you're not a good woman and that nonsense still exists today dear yes it exists even among the educated women who are bringing up daughters you know yeah. they don't they they raise their daughters also to be exactly like the way they are you yeah. know and i think this all boils down also to the awareness because you know i uh, you have to probably also delve deep down which sometimes many of us cannot do you know and that's where i think voices like yours and mine needs to be more louder you know it needs to rise above the din you know and uh, tell people that you know you should not be ashamed of your anger and uh, you know you are angry for a reason i'm sure you know there yeah. is a reason for which that you are feeling short changed in life or you're feeling that Uh, you know that hurt that you want the other person to acknowledge, and mm. that's when you get angry. So yeah. yes, and like exactly what you said, that I've been told constantly that I'm arrogant. Uh, in fact, I lost my job as a as a national head, you know, in in an advertising agency because I didn't give in. And uh, you know, and I was told that oh my God, you have attitude, and I worked, you know, with all yeah. my heart and soul. You see, and, you see, but the same behavior where you are sure about yourself, where you know your mind. you you can think for yourself and you're open to that inner voice when that is seen in a man they say oh he really knows his job i mean i've done a lot of programs with corporate for gender sensitivity and i was working with the vice president level okay top the second top layer and the title was and i gave it purposely because i knew that the way they've been conditioned they're going to object to my title so my title was us and them winning together colon winning, winning together and i had really prepared myself for it that i have to spend an hour on us and them to hi hai ki ek uh, uh, this is a kind of a formality that people say no 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 we are one we are equal it should not be us and them but you see the truth is so that's where uh, one of the uh, participants said but amita we don't really uh, think the, the the title is right for your uh, your program us and them there is no difference between us we are all the same we are, i said that is where we are going to have a discussion for as long as we don't understand why us and them you see unless you recognize that men and women are different in many ways and that differences don't need to be hierarchical and that it it, it brings richness to different ways of looking at life you will never be able to encash what women bring to the forum because most of the women are being forced subtly or bluntly to become like men if they want to be successful at work and that's utter nonsense honestly so when women want to pose uh, as very very their kind of managers they become more masculine you see my problem is in the name of neutrality equality why the hell are you saying that femininity is something that you have to be apologetic about no there was one participant who had come after 10 years or some more more time in the us with the same company and he was this was his first program in india and training program so he said he said you know this is amazing and suddenly everyone was quiet now you see a man was speaking not a man okay so this is amazing because i am recalling a particular meeting in which there was one woman and all of us were men back uh, there in the us no one gave a damn to her voice and there was a major disaster today when i'm looking back i'm saying we overlooked a very powerful voice and that is the way we could have done some damage uh, control imagine imagine that so i think yeah this is the problem women's voices don't have to become masculine for them to be meaningful yes but the whole world today is talking about gender neutrality and you know i mean there have been so many spaces that i've gone into you know moderating events or being a speaker and mm. you know so i've been told that why is it this that you're you know isn't feminism passe and i said really do you i read do you really wake believe up. that statement wake up you know yeah. it is it to the reality because wake we are up just to the reality a, a bubble which has been created it, it is tokenism that's all right now because of feminism certain changes have happened i'm not saying it's a failure it definitely is not a failure that you and i are talking today we acknowledge our voice we respect our voices and surely we have we have a lot of women to thank uh, this space Absolutely. for however yes. however I don't think the society is so easy to change. I mean, there are centuries and centuries of patriarchal, you know, dinning into them that you man is man is superior. Yeah, and I think we have uh, okay. There is tokenism in most of the spaces. There is genuine change in some. I'm not going to disrespect that because I have experienced to some extent. For example, number of women in the corporate sector 
are more. But believe me, the kind of discrimination they go through both at work and when they come back home. And very often I say one thing, uh, Moha, that people say a lot has changed, women's role have changed, gender roles have changed. And I tell them, but she goes back and she's expected to do the sub subsequent she alone. Absolutely, yes. You can say that again and again. She's made to look like the superpower, you know, Ma Durga that they've been acknowledging. And she's supposed to have these 10 hands. And, you know, in one hand is the bottle, in the other hand is a cell phone, in the other hand is the laptop, and in the other hand, yeah. you know, is a ladle. And I just think that this is such a smart way to, again, make her feel inadequate if she cannot do all of that. Because it's humanly impossible for a woman to be able to do all of that and still look pretty and still be perfect yeah. like how the images are portrayed you know in magazines and in newspapers so and oh my god I'm, it is absolute, absolute crap. sheer crap i agree with you fully on this yes so you see what happens is when a woman is pressed against the wall you see survival in fact is uh, much much stronger than any cultural kind of nonsense so uh, survival sometimes makes women you know kind of do something about that anger that we are talking about today okay and then uh, two unhealthy things they end up doing are sometimes it's uh, mostly not sometimes most of the time it's anger in the you know denial of that and this is so unfair because they're denying to themselves a complete total full emotional life and then comes anger out women and you and I while we are not angry unnecessarily, I express my anger when I have to. If you made me, if you've done something wrong with me, I am going to speak. You have no idea, Mawa, how many people in how many different situations have tried to kill my voice. And how long, you know, a journey it has been that I've been there and I've not seen, seen much of a change in even today. I mean... A woman who speaks, and imagine, in our society, oh God, I mean, uh, you know, uh, if you can speak for women, this Kavatin Ka Mushaira uh, that I have uh, mentioned in our conversation, I am against Kavatin Ka Mushaira because I think it's just sheer objectification. They don't show respect. Most of the Kavatin Ka Mushaira are low in their way, the way they are organized, the kind of audience that comes, I tell them. And a very, very, a very big idea is where I said that why can't you just have a mushaira? And do you ever call, do you ever call, most of the mushaira have, uh, mushairas have men only, mostly, mostly. They will see that we are Why do you have to publicly say that? This is considered to be an angry Amita. But yes, I am angry about the way you are objectifying women. And you know, um, a very renowned uh, poet in Pakistan, uh, Nai Kishwar, she told me in this interview, and I'll send you a link of that interview in the Hindu uh, that I gave. She said, Hamare yaha to mushaire jab khawateen ke hote hai, to hote hi si liye hai ki aake aurto ko dekh lo. I mean, what are we doing? So, when I speak against it, this practice of khawateen ke mushaire, people, male poets particularly, they shudder. Ke how can a woman have such a strong voice? So, you see, the problem is in every domain, education, I come from education. Believe me, I've seen the way there are mostly male professors in some particular subject areas, okay? And the difficulties they create for women in the department, if they happen to be professors who are their supervisors and the girl has to compromise with a lot, I've read many cases. It's everywhere, unfortunately. So I think the basic thing needs to change. This upbringing, parenting needs to be very conscious very often women, because they've not gone through good times, may end up, you know, uh, not, I mean, a lot of women who are passive, for example, they don't have strength to speak up. I want them to learn to value their voice and speak up, but they turn against those very women like you and me who are talking about it. So I think there's a very, very deep level work that's required, Mahua. We have a long way to go. Yes, miles we have go. a very, very long way to go. There are miles, miles to go. And I, so, you know, I mean, you've touched upon a subject that I think so many women will relate to. And uh, thank you so much, Amita, for being on today's podcast. And, you know, I look forward to having a lot more conversation with you because you can bring into light the work that you've done and, uh, you know, speak about all of this. But before I end, I will talk about a little bit about anger. Anger is like a flash of the fire that sparks in your brain when you feel you've been shortchanged. Anger is rooted in the brain's reward circuit, 
we are constantly often subconsciously weighing up what we expect to happen in any situation hmm. when there's a mismatch between what we've learned to accept and the hand we are dealt with our brain reward circuit sounds the alarm and activity is triggered in a small almond shaped region in the brain called the amygdala, amygdala. yeah so it is the amygdala that triggers us to be angry in and fact, women you know, i am going to cut you here but i think you're making a very good point this amygdala should not be looked at as a bad bad uh, feature of the brain amygdala is sense it senses any kind of threat now if it, it may be a threat to your bodily existence it may be a threat to your dignity it may be a threat to your rights the moment it senses the threat it kind of triggers a process which ultimately is supposed to be valid anger at this Uh, wrong that's being done to you. So women should pause and look at it and accept it. That now I need to think about what's not right here. That's very important. It's a very important tipping point. So you know what? Before we end, I will say that please embrace the amygdala because I'm sure it is giving out a message to you. And I will repeat your line that has stayed back with me, and I will be writing an article on this. A woman connected with her inner voice is called a bitch. So please don't let you believe let any one of you believe make you believe that your inner voice needs to be shut up your inner voice needs to be thwarted and once again Dr Amita it's been an honor to have you on my podcast if people were to get in yes. touch with you how should they get in touch with you please I'll share, share with my us email your, id with you yes please share your email id right now yes it's a a m w e T A dot P A R S U R A M at gmail dot com. So here you go with uh, the email ID. So whoever wishes to get in touch, understand a little bit more if they are going through a difficult time or a difficult relationship or just trying to understand their own emotions, their own inner voice. That's how you can get in touch with Dr. Amita. And as for me, I am going to see Dr. Amita next week in Delhi over a cup of coffee, and maybe we Look will do. a life together when we are together in delhi thank you so much to you our dearest listeners you can find us on your favorite streaming services find us on spotify amazon music apple podcast and of course all other major streaming services with loads of love we are moody mohavas podcast where hatke is hot